Welcome to This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and today I'm going to be talking to you about what a nursing home is and five things that you need to know. So a nursing home is basically a place that you go when you need care, but you don't need to be in a hospital. But you also can't be cared for at home. So it's kind of this middle ground between the hospital and home care. They do play an important role in our society, yet a lot of people still think about them in a negative way. And a lot of that has to do with the history of cases of poor care, abuse, or neglect um, that follows this industry in spite of 35 years of regulation by the federal government. In fact, it's the most heavily regulated industry next to nuclear power plants. I've worked in and around nursing homes for over 25 years, and I can personally tell you that there are many good people working in this industry, and they're working to improve the quality of care until it gets where it needs to be for older adults and people living with disabilities. So now let's dive into the five things you need to know and understand about who pays for care, what kind of care is delivered, and who actually delivers that care in a nursing home. So number one, who pays for nursing home care? So nursing homes take federal dollars in the form of Medicare for up to 100 days, but not 100% of the bill. So to cover that part, if you don't have supplemental insurance, then you have to pay out of pocket for the difference. After that 100-day period is over, you pay for your care with your money, and this is called being private pay unless you have supplemental insurance. And the third form of payment um, that nursing homes take is state dollars, which is Medicaid. But Medicaid is only for people who have spent down their own money or otherwise qualify for Medicaid. And I'm talking about primarily people over 65, not people with um, disabilities. The second thing you need to know is what type of care is provided in nursing homes. The answer to that is simple, is skilled care. But when I've asked my nursing students or really anyone for that matter, what the term skilled care means, there's usually kind of these blank stares and they're like, what are you talking about? Um, Sounds fancy, like it should be important. And well, it is. It's actually at the heart of what distinguishes a skilled nursing home from assisted living. The term skilled means that a licensed nurse provides some of the care that's needed each day. So the third thing you need to know is who exactly provides the skilled care. So one group that provides skilled care care are licensed nurses and pay attention to that term licensed. Um, This could be a baccalaureate prepared registered nurse or an associate degree registered nurse, or it could be a licensed practical nurse or an LPN. So if you're in a skilled nursing home, you require skills, some type of skill that only a licensed nurse can provide. Maybe you need wound care or you have sliding scale insulin or some complex medication regimen that needs monitoring by a licensed nurse. This is one type of skilled care that's delivered in nursing home. And a nursing home is required to have a licensed nurse in the building 24 hours a day. So that could be an RN or an LPN, but they also have to have a registered nurse. And that's either the baccalaureate or the associate degree level in the building eight hours a day seven days a week and on call 24 hours. This is very different from assisted living. Um, A lot of assisted livings advertise for um, providing nursing care, but they're actually not talking about licensed nursing care because the fourth thing you need to know is who provides most of the care. So the bulk of the care that's provided to nursing home residents is actually done by certified nursing assistants or CNAs. They are an important and integral part of our nursing team, and we couldn't provide daily care without CNAs. And these are some of the hardest working people that I know. They have a tough job day in and day out, and they are seriously underpaid. So the bulk of care provided to nursing home residents is done by certified nursing assistants or CNAs. They are an important part of our nursing team, and we couldn't provide all the daily care without nursing assistants. These are some of the hardest working people I know, They have a tough job day in and day out, and they are seriously underpaid. All nursing staff in nursing homes are underpaid, but CNAs bear the worst of it. They aren't even paid a livable wage, and that has to change. If you were in an assisted living facility, a lot of this care would either be done by a skilled CNA or a med tech. But notice no licensed nurses um, are required for assisted living, and that's because people living there don't have a skilled need. So the fifth thing to know is what other skilled care is provided. So the other thing that can be considered skilled care is rehabilitation. So this is our physical therapist, our occupational therapist, or speech therapist. 
And these are really important team members. Um, they're typically in a building Monday through Friday during normal business hours, and they help our residents get stronger. They can help them relearn to do things to help them be independent, or they can relearn communication skills, um, even help with swallowing, which is where my uh, niche tends to be. But you know, because rehab's in the mix, it's the reason that skilled nursing homes market themselves as um, rehabilitation centers and they kind of dropped the nursing home term. So this rebranding as rehabilitation centers and nursing care um, is really just done because the public doesn't really want to go to a nursing home, even though it could be the very best place on earth for you to go so that you can get better so that you can go back home. I think that most people think if you end up in a nursing home, that that's where you're destined to, to die. And that's not true for a lot of people that are going to skilled nursing homes um, these days. They're really going for rehabil rehabilitation so they can get back home. Um, so that's the difference between like a short stay and a long stay resident. A short stay resident is someone who's there for rehab with the goal of going back home. And a long stay resident would be someone who's not able to get better enough um, to go back home or they aren't able to, to take care of themselves. So these are the five things that you need to know about the type of care provided in nursing homes, skilled nursing home, rehabilitation and nursing facility, whatever you, you want to call it. So these are five things that you need to know about the type of care and who pays for care and who provides the care in a nursing home, a skilled nursing home, skilled nursing facility, rehabilitation and nursing care facility, whatever it's called or branded. Um, if it's skilled care, these are the things that they're going by. One other thing that you would need to know is if you need to place a loved one or you yourself need to go to a nursing home, the Center for Medicare Medicaid Services does make a nursing home checklist. And it will give you other things to think about so that you can take notes as you're visiting different facilities and use it as a guide to help decide which one may be the best one for your loved one. And thank you for tuning in to this episode about five things you need to know about nursing homes. Thank you for tuning in to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my other episodes on my YouTube channel by either by subscribing and ringing the bell to get immediate notifications when new content comes out. In addition, you can also find the audio version of the podcast on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Please feel free to leave an honest review because more reviews mean more awareness of the podcast and helps us move towards an age-friendly world. If you have a comment or a question, you can visit my website, melissabphd.com. Go to the Contact Melissa tab, and you can leave me a voice message. You never know. It might just include your question or your comment in an upcoming episode.